Hello, Rupa here. I'm back today with a video tutorial. It's been a while since I did a video tutorial. And since these days we're all locked up at home, I thought we could do something interesting with things just lying around at home. Uh, what are we going to do today is a mini journal, which I had posted last week, like this. These are tiny little micro mini journals, if you want to call it. They just fit right into your palm. Okay, so things that you will need to make these are uh, some old playing cards. If you don't have old playing cards, you could use up your cereal box card and cut it to the size that you want and you could work with it. And then we have some uh, tea bags. These are dried up and emptied. So tea stained tea bags, all dried. Then what you will need is uh, some decoupage napkin and then you need some old book pages okay and I have some coffee stained notebook pages which I've just cut it to size you could use any notebook pages anything this is called a junk journal because we're doing it with papers available you don't have to hunt for proper you know papers these could be used up papers one-sided papers one side printed papers anything it's just your imagination okay so these are the basic materials then you need some scrap piece of fabric for bi binding and uh, tying up the journal and a small piece of cereal box strip just to make the spine of the journal here we go. where is the journal where is the journal yeah it is here okay so this is for the spine the strip here comes as the spine here okay and what you might need is some inks and uh, daubers or sponge to apply and then you need of course a needle and thread to sew up the signature into the book okay so let's start the first process is how do we create a vintage look to the playing cards like here they are this is how normal cards look like and what we're going to do is make it look like this so this is the difference so from this to this this is how your card will end up looking for that what you need is take up any cards that you have uh, I would like to use up something that doesn't have too much happening let's say we do a four of hearts and then maybe a seven of spade okay there you go and of course you need glue for this project so I'm sure you'll find all these things at home. If you're a tea lover, start buying your tea bags today and dry them up. It's pretty sunny these days. Okay, so where's my glue? What am I going to do is just apply some glue. You could use glue or a glue stick too. Okay, so at random places, I'm just going to apply some glue. And stick the book page onto it okay and this has a lot of room let's do it right in the center we need a little bit of the card print also showing so let's not cover the whole thing okay so the book book page is stuck you leave it to dry a couple of minutes let this dry Meanwhile, what you could do is you could choose your tea stained bags. As you know, I love browns. Look at the lovely textures of the tea stain here. Okay, I'm going to take this one. We're just doing it with two cards. You will need four for this, for the journal, because this is a front cover. And then you need one for the back cover, of course, and for the inside. So when you open up, it's two cards. And at the back, two cards. So you'll need four cards in total for this and then you open up the tea bag pretty easy okay so that's there tea bag is ready just waiting for that book page to dry meanwhile what you could do is um, get your pages ready for the inside of the book and also get a spine cut okay and of course you will need a masking tape for this project too which is to get the 
front cover back cover and the spine in place okay so this is just i think this is about quarter of an inch yes this is just about a little over quarter of an inch this is one centimeter actually one centimeter is your spine here okay so so it's going to be like two cards and your spine here so that's how we need to get this in place okay so i'll be back once the pages are dry on the playing cards okay so the book pages are dry what you need to do is just rip it open like this so wherever the print stays it stays wherever we glued it the rest of the page is just going to come off don't bother so we have a, a nice print from the page here likewise Oh, no, it didn't stick. Anyways, I have another one. Okay, so what's the next step? The next step is you take your tea bag, okay, and I have some glue here with me. This is glue and water mixed. What you need to give here is a nice coat of glue and water onto the card. And are you ready for the magic? Okay, you could ink up at this stage also. I like it to do the inking later because the tea bag as such has some tea stains in it. I want that to be highlighted first. So you give a generous application of the glue and water mixture here so that it covers the entire card. And then take your tea bag. So this will cover two cards actually for you. And seal it from the top too okay so that's sealed from the top you can see the tea stains showing up and then some little texture from the tea bag too that's what we want some texture and color just to make it all vintage and old I'm going to dry, bear with me. This is dry. We can now trim the edges, take the excess of the tea bag. This is still not brown enough, at least for me. So what we do is we're going to ink up here and there. Okay, there you go. So I have my Distress Oxide in my favorite color vintage photo. You can take a sponge and then you could just go about dirtying the card. However you want, how much of a brown that you like to see on it okay so if you're doing the same with the cereal box okay mind you it has to be a plain background okay so then you would probably do the book page thing and then the tea bag and you could do some stamping just to give some extra print on it because otherwise it's going to be very plain okay and of course we're going to decoupage something too okay so this is your card as such from a nice white looking new card to something which looks vintage and old okay so the next step would be to decoupage something this is optional i like to have a pop of color here and there because this is going to be the book cover so we could have some element of color popping uh, i'm going to peel out a few roses and see how much is going to come Okay, so this is your tissue. The focus is not the flowers or anything, so it really doesn't have to be perfect. We just want some color popping in. Okay, and then remember to take off the layers 
and I'm just thinking just that bit here I don't know on the border so you could use any decoupage glue for this so many available these days in the market so for decoupaging this what you need to do is take your decoupage glue and apply it randomly where you want to put the tissue okay and then I am just saving it from the top okay so I just want it on this edge a little bit we're going to let this dry and then I will show you how this looks okay so here it is the card decoupage with a nice floral print in one corner I'm going to take up some old ones which I've already done so we, as I said we need four so this will probably be the front and then we have one for the back cover okay so let's choose two as of now and then the spine okay now what you need to do is so this is going to come as a front so I'm going to lay it down back like this and like this and then inside of course we'll have two just take up your masking tape this is a two inch one you could use a duct tape too so what I'm going to do is keep the masking tape I'm placing this and then comes the spine just a little bit of spacing not too much okay and the other card alrighty so that's it and then we can cut it off I'll tell you why so this is just to create that book so that's your little book which is ready okay as you can see just one card is not enough which is why two but what I do is I sandwich another old card in between so it's totally three cards this side and three cards this side but it's enough if you just decoupage and do the vintage finish to two four of them because only that is going to be seen the center one need not be done okay so this is your little booklet as of now how this looks what I like to do is I like to reinforce the spine with that little fabric piece this little fabric piece will become the spine here to cover this is just a piece of cotton fabric you could tea stain or coffee stain this I'm going to ink this up later so let's take some glue is going to apply it over the spine this area and then I shall dry this cut the excess and come back okay so the spine the cloth is cut to size okay and now what we can do is get in the other two cards and then create the book so what I do is like I said I sandwich it with some other old playing cards or some other piece of card stock or anything that is lying at home so let's say the inside this can show up so two more cards It doesn't matter which side up because this is not going to be seen okay this is just to strengthen the front and back cover so that it's not too flimsy okay are you ready
ready for the sandwich. Here you go. Okay, so this is going to come here. You could decoupage this too. I am not showing it now. You could always decorate it however you want. Okay. So that's our little book cover ready. Okay. So now this is pretty sturdy. So what you could do before this is, I forgot. Let me rip this. It's Thankfully, it's not dry. The other piece of fabric that is there. Okay, I'm going to use this uh, for the tie-up. So, we cut this by half. So, we can have this stuck between the sandwiched layers. So, you should remember to do that. Do that. Okay, so there you go. This one here. then thankfully I remembered uh, happens such things happen hmm. okay how would you close this little journal otherwise it's going to really pop open with so many pages inside so you really need a closure so yes so that's how it looks at this stage okay let this dry meanwhile what we can do is we have the papers ready to go in for the little booklet inside so mm, that's some old notebook pages from my daughter's notebook schools are done so I've just cut open there are some which have her handwriting inside but that's okay that was one side written page uh, these are old coffee stained papers so you it's totally up to you whether you want to stain them or you want to use them pristine white okay so this project being vintage I like to have them a little stained here and there you could use um, coffee or tea or you could even stencil with the brown or ink the pages however whatever thing you have at home okay so I have cut some of the pages to size just the height a little shorter than the book book cover and some which is a little longer intentionally just to show you how you could create a pocket with it so I'm thinking about you know 10 to 12 pages would be enough I'm not even counting uh, 12 pages and then let's insert a few long ones here and there some dates in my daughter's handwriting popping up these are some old pattern papers slipping in that too one of that there's one more which can come in here this way I think that should do we don't want the booklet too thick too okay so that's okay so what you do is you fold them Pattern on one two. Okay, you fold them. To the size. Like so. Okay, so all the long ones. You could just. Fold them up to the right. Length of the book cover. Since you have other pages, you know how much you need to fold. And then you will see how the pocket happens. Okay. So now they are all the same size. Okay. Now what we do is, it's better that you fold them individually. Let me do that. So you fold the pages. And then get your little booklet ready. And get your needle ready to needle and thread okay so I have all the pages lined up mind you this is a junk journal you don't have to be you know really particular about the pages that go in you could use pattern papers you could use old envelopes whatever old storybooks pages from anything you need a little bit of space for journaling here and there you can have some interesting printed pages inside pages from old dictionaries so it's basically using up whatever supplies 
of paper that you have. I had old notebook pages. Of course, we do want some space for writing. So this fits in. Okay. It depends how fat you want. You really want it to burst open, then have it a little thicker because we have a spine here anyway for fixing it. Okay. So the booklet is ready. The book cover is ready. How do we get it fixed? You need a pokey tool and a sponge for this. The foam pad. Okay. And what I'm going to do is keep the booklet in the center that's a little tricky but I just like to eyeball and do it I'm not too precise about these things it doesn't matter a little bit of perf imperfection here and there is absolutely fine because this is after all end of the day handmade and mind you you're doing it with the supplies available with you right okay so I think I have my center here be ready with your uh, needle and thread. I'm going to clip this just so it doesn't move. Okay. So, these two holes. Yeah. And one here. So mind you, we have the fabric and the serial box spine there. So I'm just going in, just a simple way of attaching it. I hope you can see it. Okay some charm about hand sewing things this is embroidery floss and I've just threaded it okay that's enough so what you need to do is tie this up tightly Okay, so this is tied. You could have a little overhang, maybe have a little charm hanging or you could always cut it up later. So at the moment I'm just going to cut it. Okay, so I can remove the clips now and your little book is ready. Look at that, look at that. Out you go. That's how it looks at the moment bursting open so which is why you know the tie up is very important okay so what you are going to do to the pages is totally up to you okay you could stamp on a few you could use corner punchers and then uh, clip up the corners you could decorate them you could stick i don't like them heavily embellished because end of the day this is very practical you need to use them so i don't want anything hanging too much too much bulging and falling out and all those kind of things so i like to keep it simple i like to stamp it here and there okay so now what happens to these little fold outs which we did now these become pockets so wherever you see these fold outs all you need to do is stick up the sides okay and then you get little pockets where you have uh, can keep tags this is a little parchment paper yeah nice little print so I'm going to do all of that and come back I have stuck all the pockets we are all ready. In there. Okay. The next stage is what do you do to the closure? Like you see in uh, these journals, I have colored them and then stamped with little words here. This one says wish. This is a little wish journal. So you could choose whatever you want. Let's do a wish again. Let's really wish things get better soon and we get back to a normal life at the earliest so another wish journal again okay so you need archival inks for this and I have these uh, individual alphabet stamps okay so we're going to do wish again where are you
and there's the A. You could use up any stamps that you have with you, just that it has to fit into this. There's nothing else that matters, or if you don't have stamps, totally understandable, you don't need to do that. I can't spot the H, yeah, it's here. Okay. So I'm going to leave some gap and then continue with it again. Let me finish that and come. Okay, so the stamping is done. I have uh, stamped little wishes on the tie up. Now we need to color the fabric. For that, you will need a plastic sheet. Take any two shades of your inks. I have take, taken green color here, two shades of green. So that's peel the paint and crushed olive. Okay, and then you can spritz some water just to reactivate the colors here. Okay, and then just stain up the fabric. There you go. Ah, I just love getting dirty here. Okay, I hope you can see it. The plastic sheet is reflecting the light. Just staining up the fabric here with the ink and water. Okay, so that's how it's picked up the color. I shall dry this and then you can see it up close. Can you see the color? Okay, so the tie up is colored and dried too, stained with the ink. So pretty much ready with the journal as such. Okay, that's the front. So that's the tie up. Okay, so now what's left is the embellishment part of the journal, totally left up to your creativity. There's no rules here. So all the pockets here can have uh, little tags. I'll show you the one which I've done. Okay, so I have just stuck a button here, a book page button and uh, has another real button on top which is sewn. Okay, and then this is just a little label here again with wish. Okay, so you have the patience, you could ink up all the pages. I have just stamped. Okay, so there's a little fold out page envelope. So pretty much how you go about decorating it. Basic journal is ready. So some tags again with the same stained fabric okay so another stamp here so you could use up itty bitty papers with you pattern papers fold it into small little envelopes or you know little booklets like this and then slip it on into your journal like i said totally your creativity how you want to embellish and decorate your little journal okay so that's pretty much how the little tiny journal looks micro mini journal as you call it okay ready to be used a little wish journal like i said wishing things get better soon i hope you all are safe stay safe people and then i'll catch you soon with another tutorial let me know if you have any doubts i'm sure you can give this a try this spine here yeah you could ink that up also if you want to you know give it a little brown shade and you could use the same distress inks and your sponge and then ink this too and then make it a little brown and here I have added a little charm too all that you need to do is again get back to that pokey tool yes pokey tool here and then make a hole here and then use a jump ring and then hang your metal charm or these kind of beads okay and your little journal is ready so let me know how you like this video do try making i'm sure you'll have these supplies at home okay give it a try keep up cycling and i'll see you soon with another video bye